Hi, John Dixon here from the Centre for Public Christianity. We're here talking with Pastor Mark Driscoll about the New Atheism. Uh, here at CPX we're always talking about the so-called New Atheism. How is it affecting things back in the States, the, the Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins agenda? Yeah, it, uh, it's very popular in certain pockets, but overall I wouldn't say it's become widespread in so far as popularity goes. Uh, a guy like Sam Harris to me just seems really scared. <laughs> he's politically scared of sort of right-wing political agenda, and I think uh, he's got a strong reaction to that. Uh, a guy like Dawkins tries to make um, more of an academic, scientific argument against theism, and so uh, the books are selling quite well in the States, and... Uh, and I think it sort of led to a resurgence of acceptable atheism. Uh, atheism sort of was out for a bit and agnosticism was in. Uh, so it's catching on among some and has galvanized uh, those who are atheists and given them, I think, a bit more voice and, and unity. But overall, I don't see a widespread conversion to atheism. Uh, in the town that I'm in, spirituality is still very popular. And I would say among the average uh, young American, still very spiritual. Things like prayer, uh, things like belief in life after death are still prevalent. Um, some are atheists and are sort of arguing against that, but for the most part I think the preponderance of the culture is still highly spiritual. Not necessarily Christian, but highly spiritual. And that includes a radical green environmentalism, uh, appreciation for the environment, seeing it to some degree almost and perhaps as sacred. And so in the area we're in, that, that tends to be more prevalent. Obviously you think there are good reasons uh, not to be an atheist, to actually believe that there's a creator God. What are those reasons? Yeah, well one thing I find interesting about the new atheism is the degree of faith that it works from. Uh, the assumption is that my mind corresponds with reality, is thoroughly trustworthy, therefore I can test empirically whether or not something is true or false, and so there's, there's sort of this unshakable but untested faith in one's own mind and one's own thought process. So I find it the sort of core of the new atheism, deep faith. It's just in me, not in God, and in my mind, not in his revelation. Uh, for me, it really all comes down to Jesus. I'm not someone who likes to argue. I mean, there's the cosmological, the ontological, the teleological, the, the Kalam argument for God. There's various ways that Christian theists and philosophers have argued for God. And I'm familiar with those, and I think there's some merit to them. But I, I think if you just take away all the clutter and just boil it down, Jesus said he was God, and he said he would die and rise, and he said in dying and rising, he would prove that he was God. So pretty much for me, it all comes down to that. Um, I'm pretty bottom line. So without the Jesus story, though, do you think it would be rational not to believe in God? Um, I think that if you look at such things as creation, you would have to infer creator. I think if you look at morals, you would have to infer some sort of created conscience. I think if you look at time, you would have to assume some beginning uh, for, them, for there to be sequential time, which is sort of the Muslim Kalam cosmological argument. And so I, I think when you look at the evidence of orderliness and consciousness and uh, the fact that we have uh, emotions and we have uh, a sense of moral value and worth and the fact that we have sequential time and orderliness and creation, when you look at those things to just say chance and circumstance and happenstance, uh, to me I think that uh, that takes a great deal of faith. Are you open to the possibility that it's not true? I mean, what would convince you uh, to give up your Christian faith? I think there is a difference between um, doubt and unbelief. Uh, I think every Christian has certain doubts. There's things we go, I don't know. I mean, that's hard for me to understand or to accept. Uh, unbelief is when there's a denial of such things. And so I think the Christian faith is big enough to include a certain amount of doubt. Um, which is very different than unbelief. So do I have certain things that I have questions about? Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm asking really, uh, what, what would it take to convince you it wasn't true? Uh, to convince me it wasn't true at this point would take um, convincing me that such things as uh, the life of Jesus didn't occur, uh, that the death of Jesus didn't occur, that the resurrection of Jesus didn't occur. For me, historically, everything comes down to Jesus and the big events surrounding his life. And for me to disbelieve uh, in the God that I believe in, Jesus, uh, I would have to be convinced that those kinds of historical evidences were untenable. You're a man of great conviction. Um, why do you think it is, though, that so many people just find it difficult to believe in Christianity or just ignore it outright? What, what's, what's driving that? 
I think sometimes there is a, a, misrepresent, a misrepresentation of Christianity as, as religion. Um, religious people killed Jesus, religious people didn't like Jesus, but a lot of religious people today say that they follow Jesus and it becomes very confusing. I know when I was not a Christian, I really wasn't interested in Christianity because I associated it with religious people. People who were very self-righteous, very proud, thought they were holier and better than everyone else, very judgmental, and, uh, and I really didn't want to be religious. And then uh, as I read the Bible, I realized that uh, Jesus was not very religious. He broke a lot of religious rules that upset a lot of religious people, and ultimately the religious people conspired together to kill him. And so when I was able to distinguish Jesus from religion, that made Jesus a little more curious to me. And uh, I think for the average person, when they see Jesus and religion put together, uh, they may have a false perception of Jesus and be rejecting him when in fact they should be rejecting religion, which in some ways is very different than Jesus. Thank you.